What's up guys, Jason here. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a simple and efficient automatic Minecraft Bedrock crop farm. This farm works on point 20 and on all platforms of Minecraft Bedrock, whether you play any phone, tablet, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, or PC. This farm can be used to easily get a lot of bread, carrots, potatoes, or beetroot. For this farm, you'll need eight stairs, two rails, two minecart with hoppers, two trap doors, two hoppers, 24 torches, four chests, two water buckets, two composters, two fletching tables, about three sacks and 36 glass blocks, about three sacks and nine slabs. By the way, you can use any slab that you want. About four and a half sacks of dirt blocks, about three sacks and two solid blocks. By the way, you can use any type of solid block that you want. A couple examples of solid blocks are smooth stone or cobblestone. And finally, four beds. The first step is to choose an area to make this farm at. You need to make this farm somewhere that is at least 100 blocks away from any villagers, beds, or workstations. After you have chosen a place to make the farm, place 13 dirt blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Then place 10 dirt blocks over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Once you have created the outline, fill it in with dirt blocks. After you are done with that step, the farm should look like that. The next step is to place a layer of solid blocks around that dirt block platform. The next step is to place two glass blocks in one corner. Now extend this two block high glass block wall around the farm. After you have placed those glass blocks, place a layer of solid blocks on top of them. Once you are done placing those solid blocks, go over to this corner. Then count 7 blocks to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now place 2 blocks over here. Then place 2 blocks over here. And 2 over here as well. Then place a glass block at each of these spots. After you have done that, place a solid block at each of these spots. The next step is to break these two blocks. Now place two chests over here. Now go over here. Then break these three blocks. Then crouch down and place a hopper at this spot. Make sure the nozzle of that hopper is pointing towards that chest. The next step is to place a trap door at this spot. Then place a block over here and two rails over here. Now place a minecraft hopper at this spot. Then push it on top of the hopper. Once you have done that, break these rails and this block. This will be the collection system for this layer in the farm. The minecraft hopper will funnel the crops into the hopper. Those crops will then get funneled into that collection's chest. The next step is to count six blocks back from this spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then place two blocks over here. Once you have done that, count two blocks to the right of this spot. One, two. Then count one block down. Then replace this block with a stair. Then count four blocks to the left of this spot. One, two, three, four. Then replace this block with a stair. Now count two blocks forward. One, two. Now replace this block with a stair. Finally, count 4 blocks to the right of this spot. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now replace this block with a stair. At this point, you should make an infinite water source. To do that, first go somewhere near the farm. Now place blocks in this formation. Then place water over here and water over here. By creating that infinite water source, you will be able to use 2 buckets to fill in all the water for the entire farm. Now place water in each stair. By doing that, the crops will have access to water. The next step is to go to this corner. Now place a torch over here and a torch over here. Once you have done that, place torches like that in the other three corners. These torches will provide light so that crops can grow even when it is nighttime. 
After you are done placing those torches, place a torch at each of these spots. The next step is to till every dirt block. By doing this, you will be able to plant crops. Once you have tilled the dirt blocks, they should start becoming watered. The next step is to plant the crop that you want to grow on this layer. You can plant seeds, beetroot seeds, potatoes, or carrots. By the way, if you choose to plant seeds, you will get bread instead of wheat. That is because the villager will automatically convert wheat into bread. I'm going to plant potatoes on this layer. You will need about 2 sacks and 10 of the crop you want to plant in order to cover all the tilt dirt blocks. As you guys can see there, I'm now done planting all those crops. The next step is to bring a villager over to this chamber. I'm now going to show you all one easy way you can bring a villager over here in survival mode. To do that, first place two blocks over here. Then place two blocks over here. And two over here. Now place a block at this spot. Then place a power rail over here and a lever at this spot. Now flick it down. That should cause that power rail to become activated. Now place four rails over here. Then place your rail at this spot. At this point, continue placing rails until you get to the nearest villager. You can use any villager except for a green coat or baby villager. That is because those villagers cannot link to workstations. Also, don't use any villager that you have already traded with before. As you guys can see here, I have already traded with this villager. If you want to use a baby villager, you will need to wait until it grows into an adult first before bringing it to the farm. After you are close to a villager, push the villager into a minecart. Then push the minecart over to the farm. If you don't want to have to place so many rails, another option is to transport a villager using a boat and lead. To transport a villager using a boat and lead, first place a boat next to a villager. Then push the villager into the boat. Once the villager is in the boat, attach a lead to the boat. Now slowly walk over to the farm. By the way, make sure you don't walk too fast, otherwise the lead will break. If you ever get stuck on a ledge, you can place some water. Then pull the boat up the water. Once the villager is at the rail system, place down a minecart. Then break the boat and push the villager into the minecart. Now push the villager into the farm. If it appears to get stuck over here, just push it forward. The next step is to break this block, then break the minecart. Now place two blocks over here, then place a bed at this spot. Now wait for the bed and villager to show green particles. When that happens, it means the villager has links to the bed. If your villager does not link to the bed, try breaking all beds at the village or villager breeder you got the villager from. Now place a fetching table over here. Then wait for the fetching table and villager to show green particles. Once that happens, it means the villager has links to the fetching table. If you got this villager from a village and can't get it to link to that workstation, try breaking all workstations at the village you got it from. Then trade with the villager one time. By doing that, the villager will not lose his profession. Then break this workstation. The next step is to place a block over here and rail at the spot. Then bring another villager over to this spot. Once there's a villager over there, place two blocks over here. Then place a bed at this spot. Now wait for the bed and villager to show green particles. After the villager has links to the bed, place a composter over here. Then wait for the composter and villager to show green particles. That means that the villager has links to the composter. Then trade with this villager one time. That will prevent it from losing its profession. Now break the composter. At this point, break these two blocks. Then push the villager into the farm. Then break this minecart. Then break this part of the rail system. Now place a glass block over here. The next step is to create the second crop farm layer. 
To do that, first fill in this outline with dirt blocks. Once you've done that, the farm should look like that. Now make the rest of this crop farm layer. It should be built exactly like the layer below it. Out of the way, you can grow a different crop on this layer. I'm going to grow carrots. Out of the way, if you have trouble getting the villagers to link to workstations, try placing multiple workstations. If you choose to do that, make sure you break the workstations later. Once you're done with that step, the farm should look like this. As you guys can see here, this second layer is exactly the same as the first layer. Make sure you link to the villagers to the beds and workstations correctly. Also, make sure you trade it with them to prevent them from losing their professions. At this point, you can break any rail system and infinite water source you made near the farm. The next step is to create a roof out of slabs. By doing this, you will prevent the villagers from getting struck by lightning. Once you are done with that step, the farm should look like that. At this point, link any farmer villager on a layer that has beetroot or wheat to a composter on the same layer. For example, the top layer of this other crop farm I made has wheat. To link a farmer villager on a layer to a composter, first place a composter over here. Then wait for the composter and villager to show green particles. If the composter shows green particles but the villager doesn't, that means that the wrong villager has linked to it. If that happens, you will need to place another composter over here. Then wait for it to show green particles. Since that composter and villager showed green particles, I know that villager has linked to it. Once you have done that, break any composter on this layer that is not linked to that villager. The reason why you need to link farmer villagers to composters on layers that have wheat or beetroot is to prevent their inventories from getting clogged with seeds. I'm now going to do a quick fly around so you can check and make sure you've made this farm correctly. The front should have these villager chamber collection systems. In there, there should be the farmer villagers and the crops. Finally, up here, this should be the roof. I am now going to show you how to use this farm. To use it, all you need to do is wait. Over time, the crops will grow. Whenever a crop is fully grown, a farmer villager will harvest it, then replant it. It will collect the extra crops in its inventory. Once the farmer villagers have a lot of crops, they will eventually try to throw some crops over to the villagers in these chambers. Whenever they do that, the crops will get collected by the minecart hopper, funneled into the hopper, and funneled into the collection's chest. By the way, farmers only work when it is daytime. Whenever you want to collect the crops, all you need to do is open these chests. If this farm does not work for you, try giving the villagers some of the crop that you wanted to harvest. Also, try waiting for one in-game day. If this farm still does not work, try replacing all the villagers with villagers you know have empty inventories. If you do that, remember to link the villagers to the beds and workstations correctly and trade with them. One way you can get villagers with empty inventories is by making a villager breeder. A link to my easiest villager brooder tutorial is in the description. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this simple and efficient Minecraft bear rock crop farm. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out other Minecraft videos. Thanks for watching.